you have a cell phone or a pager, uh, please uh, turn it off or set it to stun. Baruch Dayan HaAmet, we praise the judge of truth. It's a beautiful weather day outside. We gather in sadness, however, the sunshine brings us some comfort. And so we begin with Psalm 121, a good psalm for someone who likes to be outside. Esai enai el haharim me ayin yavo ezri. Ezri me im adonai ose shemayim va'aretz. Al yitain lamot raglecha, al yanum shomrecha. Hine lo yanum velo yishan shomer Yisrael. Adonai shomrecha, adonai tzilcha al yad yeminecha. Yomam Hashemesh lo yekeka v'yarech balayla. Adonai yishmarcha mikol ra yishmoret nashecha. Adonai yishmar tzedcha v'uecha me'ata v'ad olam. I lift my eyes to the mountains. This is how we all feel. Absolutely. I lift my eyes to the mountains. What is the source of my help? My help comes from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. God will not let your foot give way. Your protector will not slumber. See the protector of Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. God is your guardian. God is your protection at your right hand. The sun will not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will guard you from all harm. He will guard your soul, your going and your coming, now and forever. And together let us recite in the English the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He guideth me in straight paths for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. It is a privilege to call forward to eulogize their dear father. Brad will come forward, and then Bruce will speak as well. I'd like to thank everybody for coming. It's an honor for us to have you with us. I would like to first thank uh, Janice Khan for all her help and support throughout the years. Um, she was the daughter that my parents deserved and the guardian that he uh, that, uh, he also needed. Thank you, Janice, for all you've done. Time is the uh, most fleeting of resources. We can't create it. We can't purchase it. We can't see it, we can't feel it. All we know is that it exists. But uh, it comes, we can't take it away and we can't give it. But my dad and my mom before him made the most of their time on this earth before moving on to the next. I don't know if some of you might have seen the picture I posted the other day of them. Uh, it was a picture of both my mom and dad before they got married. They both had these biggest grins in the world on their faces. This was before they had three sons, seven grandchildren, and two great-grandchildren. As if they knew that their lives were gonna be filled with blessings. But my brothers and I took care of that. <laughs> As some of you know, we were probably one of the loudest boats on the lake, but we were passionate. But my dad was the most happy, and we also performed the best when we got together and worked as a team. 
he always had the biggest smiles. But I also learned all kinds of different ways of putting swear words together. Not just for my brothers, but also for my dad. When I was a child, about uh, seven or eight years old, my dad traveled a lot. But when he was home, he would be in the basement typing in his office, and I would lay by the register listening to every click. I don't know if you knew that he was a pretty fast typist. He wasn't a hunt and peck, but he was all fingers. When he was in the military, he was down in the bilge, bailing water from one section to the other, and a chief petty officer went running around looking for somebody that could type. Well, he raised his hand, said, I can type. They took him and made him the quartermaster. That's the person that orders all the parts and all the supplies for the boat. Also one of the most popular people on the boat. He also learned not to volunteer <coughs> in the Navy. He one time said to his two buddies, hey, I know how to get to uh, town a lot quicker if we volunteer for KP. That's Kitchen, per uh, kind of kitchen Patrol. Yeah, Kitchen Patrol. He says, they're going to ask us to peel the potatoes, but there's this big machine that they put the potatoes in that does all the peeling for you. All you got to do is wash them. His two buddies said, hey, that's great. So went, went to there, volunteered for KP. They did the washing, and my dad went up to the head cook and said, we're done. And the cook goes, what about all the eyes? <laughs> now they found out how long it was going to take to get all the eyes out of the potatoes. They had to get those out by hand. So hours later, they were able to go into town. So let's see where we're at. My dad was always thrilled when one of the grandchildren would come into the world. He thought that was one of the greatest blessings. He was pleased when Hannah and Hillary were born, when Justin and Adam and Jamie came and joined us. He was thrilled when Jamie came along because he was really getting sick of boys by the, that time. Um, so was my mother. She always wanted a girl, and Jamie was the first. And then, the big surprise, we had twins. And they were just as surprised when Erica and Allie came into town. And what a blessing. He taught most of us, including the grandchildren, how to sail. He introduced us to skiing. I wouldn't exactly say it was a lesson, but like, here's the hill and here are the skis. See you later. Everyone who knew him warmed up quickly when he was around. He always seemed to have a gentle smile on his face as if he knew something that everybody else didn't. We called him an admiral, probably the fastest guy to go from yeoman to admiral in the world without skip, <laughs> skipping all the other ranks. But there was more than just a few reasons we called him Admiral. He loved the military. He loved his country as a patriot at heart. But we called him Admiral because we knew he loved it. He loved being called Admiral. He was a true Navy person from uh, the moment he was born. He had a starboat in Chicago with uh, a partner. The partner had the sailing half, and my dad had the working half, the cleaning of it and the maintaining. But if you knew my dad, eh, he was okay with that. He's with Jeannie now, and she is holding him tight as his spirit transitions into God's hands. We all remember his, all his humor, his stories, his contagious smile. Uh, though always, we will miss you, Dad. We will always smile when we speak of you, when we think of you. You fill our hearts with love and appreciation. For the lives that we all have because of you, we are very thankful. God rest your soul, Admiral. You've gone home to the commander. Thank you.
those words as a prayer, let us say amen. Hear me in the back. I see a lot of very familiar faces. It's wonderful. And for those of you who I don't recognize, thank you for being here, too. Um, unlike my brother Brad, who came with prepared notes because he's far more organized than me, um, you'll have to suffer with my most disorganized approach to giving some type of a eulogy for my father. Um, I promise it will be brief. It will not exceed 45 minutes. Promise. <laughs> Um, just off the top of my head I'll speak anecdotally and I know you'll understand and forgive me if I break down and cry patience is a virtue isn't it um, as Brad said I, I want to thank my sister-in-law Janice um, for the extraordinary care and support and love that she provided. You're awesome. Um, she made sure that the right things happened for my dad and my mom before him. I also want to make sure that I recognize what Scott um, and Janice together did to help support my parents live the last couple of years, a few years of their lives at Menorah Park. Um, they carried the very lion's share of the financial burden, and um, that should absolutely go recognized. Um, they did it unflinchingly and without hesitation, and in the enormous generosity of it, um, at a minimum, has to be mentioned and recognized. Um, they assured that my parents' last years of life were as comfortable as they possibly could be. Fortunately, their circumstances allow them to do that, and everyone here should should know that. Um, just a few thoughts. Um, again, I won't be as organized, um, as well prepared as Brad. Um, I'm, I'm glad that my father is resting, and I'm glad that he is with uh, his wife, my mother, um, and he's at peace. Um, one of my fondest memories of my father, and I'll just share a few of those with you because there are way, way too many to recount here. But the earliest fond memory I have is when I was about three or maybe four years old, and he took me on a business trip with him because he did travel a lot, as Brad said. And, and he took me with him, and I remember sitting in the front seat with him, and I actually recall this quite vividly um, because I was quite a talker and um, probably didn't shut up. And um, he praised me for being, and I quote, quite a good little conversationalist. I remember those words very distinctly, and I was so proud that my dad thought I might understand a word that big, uh, which I didn't. Um, but he explained it to me, and I remember to this day him using that expression. And I was so proud that he thought I was a good talker. There were probably a lot of times where he regretted how much I talked, but... Um, I do remember the fond praise he had for me. Um, he was a great friend, um, a great companion, a, a great teacher. Um, not enough adjectives. Um, He was truly, truly the, <laughs> the, gr the greatest man I ever knew. Um, as much as I'm going to grieve his death, though, I really want to celebrate his life and carry with me every day the rest of my own life his very best attributes and there were many he was a great teacher 
skiing and sailing for sure, but so many things so fundamentally important about life itself. How to be a fair, gentle, kind human being. He literally had the patience of a saint at times. Um, and with all due respect and great love for my mother, um, and they got along fabulously. I think in great part because he was so kind and gentle and patient. Um, they were a wonderful set of parents for us, both of them. Um, my father set many, many great examples, um, and I hope to carry those with me th the rest of my life. And I didn't appreciate the metaphorical value or meaning of a story, not a story, I'm sorry, a comment he made at one point in time. And it was 1972 when he took my brothers and me and a very close friend sailing in the Virgin Islands for the better part of, I don't know, 10 days or two weeks. Water, fresh water was at a premium. Um, and we didn't shower as much as we probably should have. Um, but, you know, <laughs> five guys on a sailboat, who cares, right? Uh, and so one day a line squall roared through as we were setting anchor about 500 meters or so off a small resort island. And um, uh, my brothers and my friend and I were all below deck, staying out of the rain, the storm. And we kind of to the best of my recollection, remember looking around and saying, Where, where's Dad? <laughs> so we went up topside, and, and there's Dad, buck naked on the foredeck of the boat uh, with a bar of soap taking a shower in the rain. <laughs> and, you know, it's a, it's a fun little story. And, and, and his comment, uh, I didn't appreciate truly the uh, metaphorical value of the comment but to this day I cherish it very much when we asked him, Dad, <laughs> what are you doing out here? <laughs> it's storming. Uh, and there are people on shore who probably can see you, <laughs> uh, you know, here naked. And uh, he laughed, and I'm not making this up. He, he laughed and literally said, you know, son, if they've seen it before, they won't care. And if they haven't seen it before, they won't know what it is. Um, and in so many respects, that kind of just summarizes the kind of guy he was. And there's so much value in that. I, I really cherish that comment, that, that memory. Um, and of course, um, he loved uh, the water. He loved his life as a sailor. Uh, he, he did teach us all to be sailors. Um, and as Brad mentioned, there were plenty of times where uh, sparks were flying on our sailboat in the midst of a race because um, none of us were satisfied with just one captain. We all wanted to be the captain. My dad was truly the admiral on the boat. We all got to be captains, and sometimes I think he humored us and let us believe that we were captains, but he was always the admiral. Um, I, I won't bore you with more anecdotal stories, um, and there are just plenty of, plenty of very fond, wonderful memories. We're all very proud of my father. Um, he lived a good and decent life. He was a very honorable man. You honor him by being here today. Thank you. Um, my brother Scott has chosen not to make a comment, and that shouldn't be misinterpreted. He loved my father as much or more than any of us. And he was a wonderful son. And my father loved him dearly, too. Um, thank you very much for being here and for bearing with me in my sobbing. Um, I'm understandably more than upset with my father's passing. Thank you again for being here. Thanks, Rabbi. And to those words, let us say amen. As I met with the boys and a couple of the wives, I indicated that if they covered the waterfront, there wasn't going to be much reason for me to deliver a big eulogy. So just a couple of things to add to those beautiful words of tribute. This looks like a great day to go sailing. 
who could imagine in February we'd have sunshine? I mean, it's cold, but, you know, if you're a sailor and you want to be outside, it's gorgeous. It could be crummy weather. This is beautiful weather. And even in our sadness, we are grateful to God for this gift of life, 88 and a half years. In Kanahora, we should all, I would sign up for 88 and a half years. As the, as the children reminisced about Lee Kenneth Kahn yesterday, when we met, Sunday, I was struck by his love of the water and sailing. And there's a midrash from the book of, on the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 1. In Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 1 we learn, the day of death is better than the day of one's birth. But what can this mean? How can we understand this? Our rabbis explain, let's take a look at the day-to-day -day aspects of life and let's compare them to two sailing vessels. This is the Midrash, two sailing vessels. In the day-to-day -day we have struggles, we have emotional concerns, we have mental concerns. We're tested by school issues, we're tested by work issues, we're tested by family issues. By the time you're an adult, you have had loved ones who have died. And you have been through sorrows and joys. So how can we understand? And the day of death is better than the day of one's birth. The statement becomes intelligible when you compare it to two ships, both laden with merchandise, both resting at the seashore. One ship is about to set out on its journey. The other has just arrived. Many people mill about the ship that has just arrived, cheering it and praising it. Few approach the other vessel. Why? Because a vessel that has weathered the storm and has come through it successfully merits praise and merits cheer. The vessel about to start out on its voyage has not even yet been tested. And so it is of your dearly departed father, grandfather, friend. His life is compared to a voyage. His life, like an ocean, was deep, filled with high waves and storms and many obstacles, and he navigated them all unflinchingly, graciously, and he deserves praise for having endured the vicissitudes of life. Lee Kenneth Kahn was born in Chicago on April 20, uh, August 20th, 1927. He was the baby of three boys, born to Harry and Estelle of blessed memory. And all three of them are of blessed memory now as well, Melvin, Donald, and Lee Kenneth. He was easygoing. He met his dear wife at the University of Illinois in the late 1940s. They dated. One day, he was driving with her in the car, and she said, you know, We've been dating long enough. You should ask me to marry you. And he did. And they were married April 8, 1951, and shared a life of almost 62 years. When Jeanette passed away, she passed away in February of 2013. He passed away in February of 2016. They died in the same month. And on the calendar day, it's maybe, what, 12 days, 11 days? And they both died on Shabbos. When you die on Shabbat, it's a, a beautiful time of rest. There was a lot of love in this man. Love to see grandson Justin die for Hiram College. Love to see Scott dive. When Justin stopped diving, they missed traveling and going to those swim meets. As you know, he loved sailing. He loved his three St. Bernard dogs, had them in succession, not all at the same time. He liked to watch TV, Full House and Golden Girls. He loved ice cream, chocolate phosphates and chocolate sundaes. And when he was at Menorah Park, after lunch, chocolate sundae. After dinner, chocolate sundae. One of his most vociferous complaints was, they won't give me a sundae after breakfast. <laughs> loved ice cream. Many blessings of family, three boys, Bruce, wife Carol, Scott, wife Janice, 
Brad, wife Sherry, seven grandchildren, Hillary, her husband, Lieutenant Darren, Hannah, Justin, wife Holly, Adam, wife Jolene, Jamie, Erica, Allie, or Alexandra, whatever it is now. I'm calling her Allie. Is that okay? I hope it's okay. Two great-grandchildren, Lynn and Thomas. Who were we hearing before? Thomas. Right, it's, 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 how, it's how you feel when you lose a loved one. Also want to remember Jeanette's sister, Shirley's son, a nephew, Gene, and his wife, Lois. Remembered finally Lakeside Yacht Club. Dad said he wanted great-grandchildren so that he could be a great-grandfather. If a great-grandfather has great-grandchildren, he said, then we're both great. So he breathed his last on Shabbat, and so now there is no more deterioration. There's no more pain. There's just rest and wholeness and peace. His soul is returning to God to be with the soul of uh, his dear wife and family members and ancestors of our people. And also in the book of Ecclesiastes, we learn this. Chapter 12, verse 7, the dust returns to the earth as it was. The spirit returns to God who gave it we will place the vessel for the soul, the body, in the ground, and his spirit returns to God. God takes care of our spirits in a time. Uh, Brad, you spoke about time. Olam haba, the world to come, is a time. It's not a place. It's an eternal time. And their souls will be together in the time called Olam haba. The family has allowed us to send uh, a few old prayer books in the casket so that a respectful burial can be provided for holy books of our tradition as well as for his body, the vessel for the soul. We give thanks to, the, to God for this gift of long life. And so we conclude with words from the first chapter of the book of Job. Adonai Natan, Adonai Lakach, Yehishem, Adonai Mavarach. The Lord hath given, the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. O se shalom bim romav, hu ya ase shalom aleinu, ve al kohol Yisrael, ve himru yimru, amen. Ya ase shalom, ya ase shalom. Shalom Aleinu Ve'al Kol Yisrael Yahase Shalom Yahase Shalom Shalom Aleinu Ve'al Kol Yisrael May God who causes peace to reign in the high heavens cause peace to rain down upon us upon all Israel and upon the soul of our dearly departed Lee Kenneth Khan, and let us say Amen. Please rise for El Malay Rachamim. Into your care, O God, we entrust the spirit of our dear Lee Kenneth Khan, for you keep faith with your children in death as in life. Sustain us that we may meet with serenity the mysteries that lie ahead, knowing that when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you, O God, are with us, a loving friend in whom we put our trust. You are the light of our life, our hope in eternity. El male rachamim, shochen bamromim, hametze menucha nechona, tacha kanfe hashchina. Im kedoshim utahorim, kezohar harakia mazirim, et nishmat li kenneth kan, shahalach lo'olamo, ba'ahal harachamim, yasti rehu beseta kenafav lo'olamim. Vayitzror b'etzor ha'chayim et nishmato 
Aronai hunachalato, Vianuach beshalom al mishkavo, Vinomar. Amen. Compassionate God, eternal spirit of the universe, grant Grant perfect rest in your sheltering presence to our dear Lee Kenneth Kahn. He has entered eternity. O God of mercy, let him find refuge in the shadow of your wings, and let his soul be bound up in the bond of everlasting life. God is his inheritance. May he rest in peace, and let us say, Amen. In a few moments, we will go in procession to Mount Olive Cemetery. If you are not coming with us, but just wish to meet us back at Janice and Scott's house. We'll be there in about an hour and 15 minutes from now. We'll recite Kaddish for him Friday night, Wednesday afternoon at Hebrew school, and Sunday morning at religious school at Temple Israel near Tamid for the next month. The family has asked to let you know if you wish to contribute in uh, Lee's loving memory, consider doing it to the Alzheimer Association, the Cleveland chapter first, among the many places you would consider. Bruce, you had something? You you may mention something. Yes, please come forward. And then they'll be lining everybody up for the procession. I just want one extra minute, and um, thank you for indulging me that I meant to make this comment earlier. Um, my brothers and I were notorious for arguing on the sailboat at times, and my father was the great peacemaker. I think the greatest thing my brothers and I ever did together in his name was the way in which we helped him go to rest a few days ago where we cooperated and collaborated together very collegially and friendly working with the nursing and medical staff at the uh, Hillcrest Hospital to help my father go to rest gently and peacefully and in dignity and to that I am eternally grateful to Brad and Scott. My father would have been enormously proud of us and with my greatest respect and admiration for the medical staff and nursing staff at Hillcrest Hospital they were brilliant they were beautiful they were really lovely people thank you for letting me have an extra word thanks thank you. Thank you.